This is The Scoop for Wednesday. I'm Megan Bowman with the WMNF News headlines. The trial for four activists accused of illegally acting as Russian agents to help the Kremlin sow political discord and interfere in U.S. elections began yesterday. All four are or were affiliated with the African People's Socialist Party and Uhuru movement in locations in St. Petersburg and St. Louis. Among those charged is Omali Yeshitela, the 82-year-old chairman of the organization, focused on black empowerment in the effort to obtain reparations for slavery and what it considers the historical genocide of Africans. Yeshitela and two others face charges of conspiracy to defraud the U.S. and failing to register with the Justice Department as agents of a foreign government. The fourth defendant faces only the conspiracy charge. The jail in Pinellas County is seriously overcrowded, with cells holding double their capacity and some inmates sleeping on mats on the ground. WMNF's Chris Young reports the sheriff says a law signed in 2023 by Governor Ron DeSantis is the cause. Pinellas County Sheriff Bob Gualtieri says hundreds of inmates are sleeping on the floor. The county is putting four people into cells only designed for one or two people. A couple weeks ago, we were pushing up around 3,300 inmates, and we had uh, over 300 on the floor. Gualtieri says a state law from last year is the cause of the overcrowding. Inmates were previously released on a promise to appear, but now we're sitting in jail and waiting to post bond. These people are getting, kind of getting lost in the system, and they're sitting in there for extended periods of time of two or three months when they have very low bonds of less than $500. DeSantis has said the measure, quote, pushes back against bail bond reform efforts by requiring the Supreme Court to create a uniform bail bond schedule. And Gualtieri says it's leading to what he calls operation issues. You know, sometimes tensions get a little tight, you know, a little high and people get a little frustrated and, uh, you know, you have all those normal things to go with it. But we're managing it. You know, we're working through it. It's just one of those things that happens. Gualtieri says he supports the concept of the law, but it's a change that he has to adapt to. Chris Young, WMNF News. Florida Attorney General Ashley Moody filed a lawsuit yesterday in Fort Myers. Moody's office says federal agencies' handling of record requests for immigration practices have violated the Freedom of Information Act. Florida is seeking information about policies related to bringing people to the U.S. to be prosecuted for federal crimes and their possible release after serving a sentence. The suit is against the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency and the federal Bureau of Prisons. It says the agencies have not provided the records or taken steps to notify the state on how they will fill the requests. The meteorology company AccuWeather has scaled back its forecast for this year's hurricane season. It comes after the Atlantic Ocean was relatively quiet over the Labor Day weekend and had limited tropical activity last month. In March, they projected 20 to 25 named storms. And though still projecting an above average season, AccuWeather is now forecasting 16 to 20 named storms, with 6 to 10 becoming hurricanes and 3 to 6 reaching Category 3 storms strength. This hurricane season has had five named storms with three reaching hurricane strength and one becoming a major system. The National Hurricane Center is watching three storm systems right now in the Atlantic that do not pose immediate threats to Florida. Cases of the Orapush virus have been confirmed in Florida, according to the state's Department of Health, with infections in Hillsborough, Sarasota, and Polk counties. Miami-Dade has seen the most cases. The virus does not spread from person to person. People can get the virus, also known as sloth fever, from fly and mosquito bites. And although rare, fatal cases have been reported. It causes muscle and joint pain, fever, chills, and nausea. A rash can appear too. Dr. Induli K. Gopal says Tylenol is okay at first, but anyone with lingering systems should see a physician. Gopal is the medical director of infectious disease at Broward Health North. We will be able to do the necessary blood work and rule out other conditions too. If it is a bacterial infection, we need to make sure they be given antibiotics. The Florida Department of Health says all the cases were associated with travel to Cuba. I'm Megan Bowman with the WMNF News headlines. This is The Scoop, recorded at WMNF Tampa.